Welcome to Repeatable Text, Tasks, and Corrections. In this lesson, you'll learn when and how to use autocorrect, autotext, and macros to easily reproduce text, repeat tasks, and automate all too frequent corrections. Discover how custom dictionaries and clause libraries can save you time and frustration. This episode is part one of a two-part video on reusable text. We'll cover features which are available for Microsoft Word for Windows or Mac. Hello, and welcome to Repeatable Text, Tasks, and Corrections. Today, we'll cover autocorrect, autotext, quick parts, and macros. I'm Ivy Gray, and I'm here today with Baron Henley of Affinity Consulting. Ready, Baron? Take it away. Today's segment is called Repeatable Text, Tasks, and Corrections. It's hard to say. Um, and we're going to be covering specifically autocorrect, autotext, quick parts, and macros. So let's begin with autocorrect. So autocorrect is a feature in Word that works so well and seamlessly in the background that most people don't even know it's there. And basically what it does is it fixes your typos the second you make it. Um, there's a giant list of common misspelled words in Word. And if Word sees you make that mistake, it'll fix it immediately so that it never shows up in a spell check because it already is correct. Um, an example would be if I type A-C-H-E-I-V-E -E and I hit space, as you can see, it transposed those letters. If I type T-E-H, it fixes that. If you run words together, like he was in the, and see how I ran in the together, when I hit space after the word the, it will also add space between the two words. All right. so. This is working in the background. And by the way, this feature is shared between Word and Outlook. So any customizations you make to this, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a second, will also work in, in Outlook and vice versa. One of the things that people don't like about it is that it also has symbol substitutions. So if you type paren C paren and hit space, you see it immediately converts to a copyright symbol. And a lot of people don't like that. So there's a bunch of those. You may be aware of others where you type paren, r paren, it converts to a symbol. tm converts to a symbol. paren u, paren, close paren, converts to a symbol. Anyway, I'll show you how to get rid of those. And then you might also, you can use this as what we call a text expander. Um, basically, you can not only add words that you commonly misspell, which maybe Word doesn't already fix on the fly, but you can also put in little acronyms so let's say I was a, a tax attorney um, and I'd had to type Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended all the time. Well, I could make an acronym like slash IRC, watch when I hit the space bar here, space. If I type my initial that becomes my name, if I type my company acronym that becomes my company name, if you had a really long firm name like this one. So I just typed slash BSRA and then it expanded into that longer thing. Um, so you don't have to like click something else for it to occur. You were going to hit the space bar anyway, and that's what activates the auto correct. So let me show you where these features live. Uh, the file menu down to options on the left side. Then you click on proofing on the left side. So file options proofing. Then you click on the auto correct options button. That will likely take you to the autocorrect tab. If you end up on a different tab, just click on autocorrect. So I deleted all the other annoying uh, symbol substitutions, but as you can see, the top one here is the paren C paren replaced with copyright. So if I don't want that anymore, I just click on it and I hit the delete button down here. <clears throat> now, here are the other ones that I've made. So like internal revenue code of 1986 as amended right here. So basically I typed slash, and the reason I put a slash in front of it is because I want it to be a non-word acronym or an, an acronym I'm not gonna otherwise use. I might type IRC, right? For just the abbreviation for Internal Revenue Code. And I don't want it expanding into the whole thing. So I threw a slash in front of it and I only put the slash in front of it if I do want it to expand, okay? So I just typed in slash IRC, I typed what I wanted. And if it's a new one, this, is, this one is already included the replace button becomes an add button. So you just click that and that takes care of it. <clears throat> now, if I go down, if I go down a little bit farther, you can see there's other ones now. So if I, this, these were provided by Word, I didn't create this one. Colon open paren becomes a, a frown face emoji. 
if that if you don't want that, of course you can delete those as well. There's a whole bunch of emojis. Um, I have Word 365. I think that's a 365 thing when it has all these emojis in there. There's obviously other ways to get emojis into your Word document without doing these substitutions. So if that annoys you, just delete them. Okay, so I click OK, zoom back out again, and I click OK. If there are words that you commonly misspell, like for some reason, when, I t when I'm trying to type the word united, I often type instead the word untied. I just transpose letters. So I never usually intend to type the word untied. So I made an autocorrect for that. So if I type untied, right, watch when I hit space, you can see that became the word united. Now let's say I actually did want to type the word untied. Then as soon as it makes its substitution, you may be aware the speed key for undo is control Z. So if I hit control Z, as you can see, it put it back to untied. Anyway, that's autocorrect. If you, you can create them in Outlook, you can create them in Word. It doesn't matter which one you create them in, they're in both places at the same time. Let's talk about auto text. Auto text you would use when you wanna put in a, a larger piece of formatted text. So it could be a signature line, it could be an acknowledgement, it could be a caption, it could, it could be a whole document if you want. I don't know what the ultimate limit is on the amount of text you can put in a single auto text entry. For an experiment, I created a 100 page document and selected the whole thing, made an auto text entry out of it and was fine with that. So, um, I, you know, I assume there's some upward limit of it, but I've never encountered it before. Anyway, <clears throat> this is how you would create a, an auto text entry. So let me first show you where this uh, feature lives. It's under the insert ribbon and then quick parts button and down to auto text. Now I have a bunch of these already. As you can see, there's a lit, it shows me a list of all my auto te text entries. So I'll drop in the one for acknowledgement. So let's assume that I didn't have one for acknowledgement and I wanted to create one so I could easily drop an acknowledgement into any future document. Um, what you would do there is you would simply find the text you wanna be able to easily recreate in any document, it doesn't matter. So I find this text in a document, I select it, I go to the insert ribbon, quick parts, down to auto text. And now if you don't have any already in here, the only thing you're gonna see at the bottom of the list is save selection to auto text gallery. So that's what I wanna use. So I click on that, it asks me to name it. You can actually call it whatever you want and you can even have spaces in the names. Now I already have one called acknowledgement. So this is how you would actually um, edit once you've created an auto text entry, there's no way, weirdly, to go in and change the text of the entry you've already created. You simply have to re-save it. So if I call this acknowledgement, if I already have one called acknowledgement, when I click OK, you're going to see this. Do you want to redefine the building block entry? And I say yes. <clears throat> That's it. So if I didn't already have one called acknowledgement, I would have just hit save and that would have been it. Anyway, now I can go into quick parts, auto text, and choose the acknowledgement and drop it in anytime I want. Another easy way to drop it in is to start typing the name of whatever you called it. By the time you get to the fourth letter that's unique in your auto text entry names, it'll pop up a little window and ask you if you want to insert it. So if I type A-C-K-N, see that little window that just popped up? So if it's saying, hey, you've got an auto text entry that begins with those four letters. Do you want it? If you do, you just hit enter. And if you don't, you just keep typing and it'll go away. You can also, <clears throat> beyond the scope of this class, assign keystrokes to it and even buttons. I will show you how to do a button because we're gonna talk about macros. And in order to assign a button to a, an auto text entry, you actually need to record a macro. Um, <clears throat> these are quite handy. Like I have one for my signature that includes my um, scan signature, as you can see. And the idea there is um, I'm usually making PDFs out of these documents. I'm not actually printing and signing them. So if it's like a standard correspondence and close please find kind of a letter, do you really need to print that out on letterhead and sign it with a pen and then scan it and email it to somebody? Uh, if your intent is to simply email it to somebody, you're probably better off just doing that all electronically and not even sending the snail mail part of it. Um, so that's why I just scanned my signature and made clip art out of it so I could drop it into a, a signature block like that. So the point is, <clears throat> even though this is clip art, you can still include that 
in an auto text entry. Okay. And one other thing I'll say about that. This little toolbar right here across my screen is called the quick access toolbar. Normally it's at the top of your screen, but I moved it so that I could see it a little better. We're gonna do a subsequent class on cu customizing the quick access toolbar and the ribbon. So I'm not gonna jump into that too deeply right now, but you can add the auto text entry button to this toolbar. And then it makes it a lot easier to get to cause you don't have to click on the insert ribbon then quick parts and then auto text. So if I didn't have this on my toolbar, all you'd have to do to add any button to the quick access toolbar is you click, I'm gonna to go to the button I wanna, I wanna add insert, quick parts, and then instead of left clicking auto text, right click it. And if you right click it, your top option is add to the quick access toolbar. And if you do that, you now see I've got a quick access toolbar button for it. And it's just more readily accessible because I can see this button bar no matter what ribbon I'm in, it's always visible. Okay, <clears throat> a similar thing. I don't know if you noticed this. I'm just gonna do a quick um, fake one here. Notice where it's saving this. Auto text entries are saved in a file called normal.dotm. We're gonna talk about this in a subsequent class on how to share these things. The normal.dotm file is Word's default template for a blank document. So every Word user, Windows or Mac, all versions has that file on their computer someplace. And, and, and not, it's not just the blank document template, it's also a bucket that holds a bunch of other things, including macros, if you want it to, and auto text entries. So, you know, if you get a new computer and Word is going to be on the new computer and you would like what you would like Word in the new computer to be like Word on your old computer, you want to bring that file with you. Because if you put it in the right folder on the new computer, then your new Word will have all your auto text entries, your default formatting, your macros and everything else that's stored in that. Anyway, so <clears throat> the next thing to talk about um, are building blocks. Now, you'll, you may have noticed when I clicked on quick parts, um, there, was, there was a building blocks organizer down here. And, a, a, and, and you'll, you can see it's grayed out, but it says save selection to the quick part gallery. So let me explain this confusing terminology. A, a quick part is a building block. They are the same thing. Why Microsoft has two, two terms for the same thing, I can't even tell you. But in addition, to be even more confusing, auto text is a subset of building blocks slash quick parts. If you wanted to see all of those things in, in Word, then you click on the quick parts button, you go down to the building blocks organizer. So if I click on this, notice at the top, here are my auto text entries. So here is the acknowledgement that I just made. I can see a thumbnail of it, but you cannot edit. If I click edit properties, it doesn't allow you to get to the text. It just lets you see the name of it and where it's stored. So this is not terribly useful, except if I wanna delete something. So if I wanna get rid of something, I can click on it and I can hit delete and that would remove it. But you'll notice that there's all these other things in here. There's cover pages, there's footers, so when you click on, like, let's just look at this, uh, footer, <clears throat> Austin. So there's a footer called Austin. How would I access that? Well, you would go insert ribbon, footer, and I scroll down and you can see there's the Austin footer. So this is some kind of a prefab footer. It's got a border around the page. Um, you may say, so this is what it does. You may say, I would never use that in a legal document. And I wish it wasn't cluttering up my list of drop down items when I click footer. If you feel that way, then you could go to the insert ribbon, quick parts button, down to building blocks organizer, scroll down to the offending footer. Here's my footers, there's the Austin, and I can delete that. So all the little drop down options that you see like header, footer, page number, those are all building blocks that come with Word, okay? But you can create your own building blocks. Very similarly to the way you would do an auto text entry. So if I select this acknowledgement and I click on the quick parts button, but this time I, I say save to the quick part gallery, 
then it's going to make a quick part slash building block out of it and not an auto text. Now, the difference here is where they're stored. So if I do save to this, see this says save in buildingblocks.dotx. Now I'll show you where that folder is. You're not, you're not likely to find it by accident um, because it is ridiculously buried. That'll be in a subsequent class in terms of like where these things are and how you share them with other people. But anyway, it otherwise works the same. The only drawback is, so I'll just call it the same, uh, I'll call it acknowledgement two actually, A-C-K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-M-E-N-T. Gotta spell it right. So I click okay. And now when I click on quick parts, you can see it's sitting right there. So I can also drop it in like that. The difference is, that if I start typing it, A-C-K-N, the only thing that's gonna guess is the auto text. So auto text gives you that little pop-up window that allows you to easily drop some, some, something in, but building blocks don't do that. So for that reason, I tend not to use building blocks. Now I can go into um, building blocks organizer, I can sort by name, I can find acknowledgement to, you can move these over a little bit, I can just find acknowledgement too, and I could delete that. And now when I click on quick parts, it's just the menu items. So I don't, I don't really think that's terribly useful. I, if I have a choice, I'm going to do an auto text entry as opposed to a building block or a quick part because I get, I get the auto complete. And plus I like the fact, as we will discuss in a subsequent class, that it's stored in the normal template. Okay, <clears throat> finally, um, you may want to create a macro. And a macro simply takes a whole bunch of annoying keystrokes and allows you to condense that into a single button and or a single speed key. So let me give you an easy example of this. If I click on the insert ribbon and I click on date and time and I pick my format, <laughs> is if automatically update is checked, then that's a field. If I save this document and I open this document tomorrow, it'll automatically update to March 16, 2022. For that reason, some people don't like the date field because it always updates. Like if you open up a letter you typed six months ago, you wanna see the date that you actually typed the letter and not today's date. Um, and if you use that field that I just showed you, it's always gonna to update to, the, to today's date. <clears throat> so um, there is an alternative field called the create date field that will be current as of the date you created the document, but it will not update later. If I wanted to use that in my letters in lieu of the date field, then I would have to do the following. Um, it's in the insert ribbon. So I've got to click insert, quick parts button again, and down to field, create date, pick a format, click okay. So let's say that is the date field that I want to use in all documents going forward. That, in my professional opinion, is way too many clicks. I would like that to be like a button or a speed key. So let's assume we want to make a button on our quick access toolbar for that. What a macro allows you to do is record all those keystrokes and attach them to either a button or a speed key or both. So the way it works is it's basically like a tape recorder. Well, that's kind of dated, it's a dated analogy, but a tape recorder, I hit record and I do my keystrokes and then I hit stop. Okay, that's basically what we're gonna do. <clears throat> so weirdly, macros are not under the insert ribbon, they're under the view ribbon. And you got a two part macro button. It is very important that you not click the top of the button. You will not be able to record a macro if you do that. You gotta hit the bottom and then choose record macro. The first thing it's going to ask you is, what do you want to call your macro? So I can call this, you know, insert create date. All right. Actually, I'll just so I can find it easier in the list, I'm going to call it AAA because it alphabetizes them. AAA insert create date. At this point, you have a choice. Do I want to attach it to a, a button, which is going to be in my quick access toolbar, or a keystroke combination? Whichever one you choose initially, you can come back later and add the other one. So if I start with a button, I can also add a keystroke later. If I start with a keystroke, I can also add a button later, All right? But I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a button. So I click on this. This is my new button. 
And these are all the buttons currently on my quick access toolbar. So I click add. Now down here at the bottom, first of all, I get this weird flow chart icon. And then the whole thing is called normal.newmacros.aaa insert create date. Okay, so let me hit modify. First of all, this normal new macros aaa insert create date, see how it says that's the display name? You know, when you hover over a button in Word, it pops out a little window and tells you what the button does. That's what the display name is. So I certainly don't want it to be that. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna replace it with create date field. And then I don't wanna have the little flow chart icon. So I'm gonna to switch to the smiley face. So I got a smiley face, create date field. I click okay. And once I click okay, Look at my uh, cursor there. You see that is supposed to be a cassette tape. <laughs> Another very dated analogy. Um, or, uh, most you know, like my kids would have no idea what that was. It kind of looks like a mask or something. In any event, it's recording my keystrokes. So I just re-execute the keystrokes I did previously. I, get, I go to the insert ribbon. I go to quick parts. I go down to field. I choose create date. I pick a format. I click okay. And now very importantly, I need to stop recording. As you can see from the little cassette tape attached to my cursor, it is still recording. So I go back to the view ribbon, bottom of the macros button, and stop recording. And that's it. So now if I click on smiley face, I get a create date field. And so that will stay whatever date, March 15th. If I open this tomorrow, it'll still stay March 15th. Um, I'm going to do a macro to insert my auto text entry of my signature. So here's how that goes. I click macro, record macro, and I'm going to, this time I'm going to assign it to a keystroke. So I click keyboard. And what I do is I click in this little box, press new shortcut key, and then I hold down on the keys I want to assign. So I hit, let's say I want to make it um, control alt O. It says uh, that's currently assigned to paste text only. Um, I might want to keep that. Paste text only is a handy speed key. So I delete that, backspace on it, sorry. And then I can try a different combination. Uh, Control, Alt, U. Table, update, auto format. Okay, never use that. So I'm going to overwrite table, update, auto format, whatever that does, with this new macro. So I click Assign. So now alt control U is gonna be the speed key for this. And I hit close. And now I just insert my auto text entry. So I click on this and I click on that. Then I go back to macro and I stop recording. So now if I hit alt control U, it inserts my auto text entry. All right. So that's what you need to know about macros. The takeaway here is if I gotta do a quick phrase substitution, I'd probably use autocorrect. If I have formatted text or multiple paragraphs, I would use auto, sorry, auto text for multiple paragraphs, autocorrect for a short phrase. And then if I got a, a bunch of annoying keystrokes that I cannot avoid if I wanna do a particular thing in Word, then I may wanna use a macro for that and I can assign a macro to either a keystroke or a button on the quick access toolbar. Um, in, our, in our next class, we're going to talk about how to share some of these things, because after you build these, you might want to give them to other people in your office. Um, so that's going to be our next class. Thanks for attending. Thanks so much, Baron. This video was created by Ivy Gray from Wardrake and Baron Henley from Affinity Consulting, who both trained as lawyers and are now Microsoft Word and Outlook enthusiasts and productivity experts. This video is part of a series. To sign up to receive tech tips and training videos via email, please visit wordrake.com slash tech tips. Let's take Word to the next level. If you find yourself making the same changes to a document again and again, it's time to try making a global change with Find and Replace, but you'll need to take a sophisticated approach using wildcards or macros. For a faster way to fix wordy phrases that appear frequently, but in various iterations, try flexible, context-driven editing with WordRake. WordRake is legal writing and editing software from Microsoft Word and Outlook that will help you edit for clarity and brevity while respecting legally operative phrases and key legal content. If you'd like to learn more, sign up to receive tech tips and training videos at wordrake.com slash tech tips.
and you're ready to take your work to the next level, try Wordrake. Wordrake is clear and concise editing software that will improve your writing while respecting legally operative phrases and key legal content. It's a finely tuned collaborator that will help you satisfy clients, win more business, and do more high value work. Wordrake works in Microsoft Word and Outlook. It goes beyond Microsoft's built-in spelling and grammar checkers to help you reduce legalese and wordy writing. It uses complex, patented algorithms to find useless words, dull phrases, weak lead-ins, cliches, and high-level grammatical problems, then offers suggested edits in line. Your rake document will look just like a smart colleague with an English degree has revised your work using track changes. In three simple steps, you'll have a better document or email. Try it today at wordrake.com slash trial.